My name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. This <clears throat> is the R&B Money Podcast. Yeah. Ooh, it's yeah. the authority mm-hmm. on all things R&B. And instruments. And instrumentation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, 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 a lot of y'all okay, are not ve- well versed in the ways of musicianship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me. Okay. <laughs> you, <Shit>. you, you, <laughs> you standing on your drip. Huh? You, 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 you might be standing on the tune. I ain't mad at you. You stand on the tune. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, you 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 you're standing on your social medias, mm. right? Mm. But you're not standing on uh uh the gifts that personify mm. the thing that we do. Hmm? How many instruments you play? Hmm? Hmm? No? Huh? Ladies out there, what? Skin flute, that's all you play? Huh? Nothing? Huh? This nigga's attacking. Yeah, yeah. This this <laughs> this man right here, this gentleman right here. Okay? Okay, what you play? You play pimping? That's all you do? That's the only instrument you play? No, 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 we don't play pimping. We, just, we don't pause that's, pimping. That's the only that's instrument That's what we don't play. do. We don't pause pimping. I'm not pimping. talking about you, Jay. Okay, I'm talking about right. them, talking about them <laughs> niggas, okay? Mm. We got a fella in the building, huh? He don't play about his musicianship. He don't play about his artistry. And he damn sure don't play about his name. Give it up for my brother. <laughs> yeah. My sequel in the oh, building. Oh, yeah. My sequel. <laughs> my sequel. <laughs> my sequel. <laughs> Yeah. How you doing? Good man, come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Musician, musician. Yo, this man's thumb. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Arsenio. You in love, Brazil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, man. I got regular nigga hands. You bro. have to stop. You, have to, you can't start, start off like this. That's a love language. This is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that. Okay, I got it. So there's certain chords that you play because you're ah! you. Have we ever talked about that in the show? Ah! <laughs> oh, man. And listen, listen, man. My thumb is a love language. It's, it's going to age well. Oh. I'm, my, I'm getting ready to make a page for my thumb. <laughs> 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 Yo. Right here. Right here. Wow. You better make the page before this shit air. Somebody else. <laughs> Somebody else. Nigga, I got all kind of fake dumb ass pages them. now. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my brother. First of all, thank you, man. Thank you for coming, man. I appreciate man, you being here. I feel so comfortable. I'm going to take my glasses. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've been doing some cool stuff, man. Thank you. Really cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, so cool that I had to, you know. I had to be a part of it, and I appreciate. I just want you know. I want to start there, and then we'll, we'll go back to the beginning, and get sure. and get into all the intricacies of 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 where you're from, how you got your name, all of that cool stuff. Yeah, but that yams, nigga. When I say yeah, a vibe, mm. crazy. Like a lot of people explore the '90s, and you know. They they you know they 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 figure you know they figure out their way to just kind of snatch some of the nuance mm-hmm. and you know and just you're like oh okay yeah, I get it I get what you're trying to do I get dead on mm. I felt like I was in high I was graduating high school yeah. all over again that was a very when, authentic record oh man yeah thank you man Devin Morrison I can't even take all of that compliment yeah, yeah. no no absolutely yeah, absolutely he was the student sure. but it's like. What it made me realize is that people are so hungry for that energy mm-hmm. because just putting out the word like y'all might need to sing this, it just went crazy. Shout out to Charlie Wilson because that was the first, that was my first time here. That was that's what that opened my ears. I was like, what is Charlie singing? First yeah. of all, his voice is, he's out of control. Yeah. I don't like his attitude. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But then to go back to the original, like, oh, shit. I was like, oh, this needs to be a thing. And you made it a thing. This needs to be a thing. Yeah. So I'm hoping that there were millions of, you know, interactions and sales and <clears throat> and lots of show money. And uptick. <laughs> and uptick. Ah, That's what they call it. Ah. Yes. Oh, there was plenty of uptick. Yes. For you, for you too, my friend, yeah. because y'all did that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank how, did, how, did that, how did that record even come about? Just, Give me that. 
something like this. Mm-hmm. We're just men talking and then um, making music at the same time, yeah. right? I used to make a lot of videos about my observations when I travel. And I was like, in Africa, they got the yams that the women in America get in surgery to get. Mm. So that was the conversation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I'm always talking about yams and she got a yamtation back there and a yamborghini, green eggs and yam. That's just been how I've spoken Did you since say college. Yamborghini? Listen, yeah. there's yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't love worry, that. Those she are fast cars. She got a Yamborghini oh, right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. And so Devin being an equally hilarious young man, uh made an instrumental called Yams. And then we started to have a conversation over this instrumental. And you know, we were talking in tone. Uh and then we began to sing a little bit. And then I guess uh, eventually a, a song was birthed. Yeah. You know, I heard I'm yeah. supposed to do this when I talk to people. Talk so to talk. Yeah, I like that. that. Yeah, yeah. But uh yeah, I heard it was I'm just... supposed to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Look left and right when you, you know, yeah. this, uh, media training. Yeah. And, um <laughs> Man, fuck all that, man. Just, it was a joke. Like, like, <laughs> that's all they song was. We just having fun, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And like Devin is a student of commission in all things nineties. Love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You know? And you can absolutely hear it. You can hear it. Yeah. yeah. You can absolutely yeah. hear it. It's crazy. And yeah. so, like usual, I'm just having fun. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it he left and then he texts back a bridge. I text back a response to the bridge. He texts back a, a damn coda or something like that. And then I put a sax solo on it. And then Max hears it, my bass player friend and he's like you gotta put this out bro and he's telling me for years he's like bro cool oh it's set for years what for like three years maybe oh yeah yeah Yeah, every year we play it during thanksgiving thanks max it's just you know he would always do. You like, said we play it every Thanksgiving. Yes. <laughs> He's like, bro. I mean, what a yams record. Stop doing this. Yams record. <laughs> He's like, come on, stop this. Drop yeah. this record. I'm just like, come on, we was having fun. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to do all that. Finally, we just you were taking it. yourself too serious. Yes, I was. Because we 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 fight it's musicianship. We yeah, fight for the cool. Yeah, it's yeah. it's the code of musicians that just don't want to seem outside of the realm of true cre- creativity. But it's like when you're having your most fun, you're probably being your most creative because it's it's not overthinking anything. It's Correct. just yeah. It's just flowing, allowing it to be whatever the moment calls for. I think Correct. the first musician that I met that I felt like was truly having fun was T Pain. T Pain was having a good time. Great example. When I met T Pain, because at first I didn't realize mm. how much of a musician he was. Because right. nobody did because you just kind of wrote it off. Just the public's ignorance yeah. of what greatness really is. Mm-hmm. And then I meet him and I'm in the studio with him. I'm like, oh shit, this nigga's amazing. Amazing. He's just having a good fucking time. Good time. Yeah. At no point was he serious. At any moment during the session, anytime I've ever run into him, yeah. he's just a fun loving guy having a good ass time making amazing music. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, it gave me a sense of understanding freedom mm. musically to me when i when i you know when i met him i was just like damn this is he's in a very free space yeah i'm, I'm that, gonna add a person to your who would you to say? your statement that is just that are animal spirit spirit animals mm-hmm. in jazzy fay oh yeah jazzy the fizzle the fizzle yeah for the sure Fenzel. yeah yeah jazzy fizzle been having a good time great time respect Always having oh a good time. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> yes, he's always having a good time. Briefcase, yeah. jazzy fat. Yeah, always. Yeah, but, but I even say that to 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 even my own self. Like I, I've, I've made great music under duress, but mm-hmm. when I've had fun making music, that's. Yeah. What if you drop some of those fuck around records? We probably go to the moon. <laughs> We have a yams challenge Just on this. Go bitch. to the moon. Yo, thumbs up this video, man. You know, that's Just no, make sure you know. <laughs> he drops these records he's sitting on, man. Just throw a thumb so in what, the comments. So what happens? <clears throat> okay, you put the record out, mm-hmm. and I've always liked your music. Thank you. So I I had heard the record before, mm. and then I forgot about the record, and heard it again in a new light through Fetty Wap. Yeah. Ah. Mm-hmm. How does that process go though? Does is it is it literally just him taking the record mm-hmm. and doing his own thing with it, or did he reach out to y'all? Or like you know, because this is just a we're in a new music business. Yes, we are. We're in a. 
I'll take care of it when <laughs> it gets cracking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or, you know, we'll chase it once it's cracking. Oh, Whatever it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how did how was that process and were you guys involved in his release of it? Well, I was on the road at the time. So all I did was receive a text of the record. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's it. And so next thing I know, I get another text saying, yo, is it cool if he drops it? I'm like, sure. Because again, it, it's a record that we had fun with. So I'm not, it's not. Yes. In your mind. Yeah. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. not like, yo, it's not, not your baby. baby. Yeah. Right. I was like, yo, have some fun with it. He had fun with it. And even the chord choices he did, I thought it was like hilarious the way he reinterpreted it. Me and Devin having a good time because Devin's more of a stickler for, you know, the arts. And he's like, oh, he didn't do the chord change. <laughs> the seventh should have been the ninth. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. like, yo, this is fire. You yeah. Know, like, you know what I mean? So not to say Devin didn't like it later on, but I feel like I'm always down to just let art just let it out. Let, let it the be. people decide what happens to it. Right. And I'm and people would always ask me, were you butt hurt about it getting even larger with Fetty. I'm just like, no, that's no, cool. It's yeah. different audiences. Because I felt like it was a I huge record at first. I didn't know Fetty had that record out. Oh, you didn't? No. Oh, so shit. I, I, yeah. I, I loved it. When, when I did it, when we when we started the challenge and did all that, mine was Charlie Wilson. Ah, and then yeah. and then people, I saw people started attacking me like, yeah, you need to give Fetty Wap his credit. I was like. Oh, it got him wild. I loved it. I was like, it. give Fetty Wap what credit? <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is day song. Yeah, I knew Fetty's version through my son, which makes <clears> sense. because you know what I'm saying. Generation. Like it was yeah, the younger generation. Like yeah. I knew your record through me knowing your music. I knew his version through my son. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that was like my rediscovery of it. And I'm like, oh shit, wait, I know this song. I was like, wait a minute. You know what I mean? So they cussed you out. They thought they yeah, cussed they, you they, out. They, they they was like you you. You ain't, <laughs> you, you, ain't no, you ain't tapped you in. You ain't no Fetty Wap. Yeah, you ain't tapped I like, in. I, I, like, I like Fetty Wap. <laughs> I like the boy. <laughs> he got good songs. Yeah. But he ain't not the originator of this. His essence ain't why I fell in love with this. That was your argument. That was my argument. That was your tone during the That argument. was my tone. Instead of just being like, you know what, y'all wasn't tapped in. I didn't know about the I, I was tapped into the source. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ah, oh, my, my, go. my. Oh, there you go. Ah. You can't argue they with They are God. duplicators. <laughs> they are replicators. Well, well. Ah, but I went to the originator. <laughs> I went to the source. <laughs> ah. Look to the heels from which cometh my help. My uh, God. Um, so. <laughs> the gold around my neck was Dude, shining when you on, said talk that. Come on, talk the talk. Um, let's go back to the beginning, bro. Sure. Let's go back to the beginning. Um, In to the where beginning. this all started for okay. you. To where, you know, I like to say when somebody looked at you and said, that boy going to be something like that. boy got it. Or you even said, you even said to yourself, I'm kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. The beginning. Yeah. Um, I think when I was eight years old, right, this is back to the church days. So yeah. That's, you know, go there. We're going to go there. Um, I used to always ignore the sermon and watch the musicians. Yeah. That was my whole bop because they had their own little community, communicating with the hand signals and not dressing in church clothes. And I was like, they're having fun. I like this. I don't want to hear this. I'm eight years old, of course. I yeah. want to play tag at the end of the church. Yeah. And so my parents noticed that I was only gravitating towards this. And we're saying, like, we got to pray over your hands. If you want to be in the music industry or the music, you know, ministry, uh, let's make sure you're doing it right. So from there, they saw that I had an affinity for learning music quickly. I'm hopping on the drums. I had natural rhythm. I was hopping on the keys. I wasn't singing yet, but I was just trying to play all the instruments, pick the bass, pick it, whatever. And they're like, okay, he going to be somebody someday. Yeah. That's when that yeah. started. Yeah. Cool. And so then the next iteration of that was when I had to choose a related arts in middle school. Meaning you want to paint or you want to be in a band. And so I was deciding and we had a class in our school that always had a substitute teacher because she never showed up. And this particular <laughs> substitute teacher, she had a little Lamborghini behind her. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Made you more interested in the class. I said, Yeah. What's her story? <laughs> what's her story? I said, let's have a gathering. Wait, how, how old were you at this point? I was uh eighth grade. Was, uh, like a seventh, eighth. What yeah, is that? You wanna know her story. Yeah, you wanna know. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I said yeah. something in my spirit. She might have need she may she may even need the management. Mm-hmm. 
I didn't even yeah. know that word back yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. But I wanted to manage something. Yeah. For you to pray over her hand, hands. hands. <laughs> hands. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get so, there. <laughs> I'm asking my, my boys, like, yo, how do I get her heart? And he said, we got to do some research. I look at her binder. It's a picture of Najee Davis in the binder. I hit the Googles. Mm -hmm. I said, that's a saxophone player. I want to be in the band. Cool. And so I'm in the band. I'm learning saxophone like I need to learn saxophone. Every Sunday, I'm like ear pressed on the TV, trying to like figure that out. Okay, cool. I'm on the radio, all that. I get sweet at saxophone. I get sweet enough to learn my first song on saxophone, which was Naked Marcus Houston. Wow. Do, 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 do. Easy scale. I wow. said, I can learn that. Learned it, played it for her. And she was like, huh, young man. You play naked for? I like this guy. It's a savage. Yeah. yeah. It's a savage. Yo. You know the nigga who wrote naked is sitting right next to you, right? Wait, you wrote naked? <laughs> I swear I know that. I promise on everything. That's hilarious. I'm, I'm just listening to the story. I'm like, the nigga wrote and produced the song that you're talking about. You <laughs> are lying to me. See. That is cool. I'm putting my shades back on. <laughs> this, this is, is too perfect. vulnerable. Hey, this is awesome. This is too intimate. That's that, hilarious. I, that, to be young. To be young. To be young, man. What? Yeah, that's the truth. You played naked to the teacher? I did. Oh, this is sick. Yeah. You him. You are him. Yeah. This is yeah. great. Yeah. What a good day. Fuck. I'm learn sex. And then I'm going to play naked and tell her exactly what I would <laughs> like. <laughs> what I would like to do. <laughs> If there's any detention you got for me, <laughs> <laughs> any extra credit. <laughs> Here's my next question. <laughs> Is she doing five to ten? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Look at all this hot. <laughs> Look at where this music and musicianship takes us, man. It takes you places. I'd be reflecting it, it on this. Penitentiary. Oh my Shit, god! Shit, you fucking around. I'd be reflecting, like, man, we can really do a lot, man. Um, but yeah, substitute teacher wasn't there a lot, so cool. All I was left with was the instrument. Mm -hmm. Continued to play it. Got kicked out of class a lot because I wanted to learn other songs that you wrote. Mm. Unknowingly, right? He <laughs> said, unknowingly, and right. so that's all I would do during class: listen on LimeWire, whatever mixtape Lime somebody brought in on the school. You know what I mean? Yeah. I said, what's that? Okay, that's such and such. I'm about to learn that. That's all I did. Get out of class. Cool. But then I had a substitute teacher for band one day. It was this dude named Mr. Holcomb, big black dude, listen to Charlie Parker type of guy, mm -hmm. and he was like, "You gonna be something? Wow. I'm not gonna kick you out today. I'm gonna put you in the jazz band." So he puts me in the jazz band and it's way better for me because I can improv. Yeah. And the best part was that part in the sheet music and it was like, make it up. I said, oh, this for me. So every day I get to just make a solo up, then I can stay in class and just get that out. Yeah. And I feel like from there, it just kept progressing. I'm like, I don't want a jazz band. I want my own band. Mm. I don't want to go to this college. I want to drop out of college. It just kind of kept compounding from there. I feel like your yeah. generation was the generation that kind of reshaped the idea of how you learn to play instruments. Mm. Because before your generation, it was always very much the structure of Bach and Beethoven. It was just yeah. very much fingers on the middle C, thumb on the middle C, and you move from there. Mm. But I think your generation started a thing where the music needed to meet the individual. Mm. You know what I mean? Because like, one of the, the teachers that teaches my son, like she was like, well, what do you like? And he's like, well, I like Spider-Man. And she was like, okay, well, let's learn Spider-Man. Yeah. And so he's, he's excited. He's learning the theory to Spider-Man, but in his mind, he's just learning Spider-Man. That's it, yeah. he's just learning Spider-Man. Yeah. But he's learning <clears throat> all of the theory. Yeah. He I mean, understands where the- the key to all of it is- the key to all of it. Is piquing someone's interest. That's it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And if they taught us that way, we would learn so much more. But it was everything yeah. was 
this is how it's always been. It was so much tradition. And I right. think your so generation much. was a, was a start of breaking. I mean, and, and if you come across a Lamborghini, a Lamborghini will make if you, you do, come across a Lamborghini, make, you make a nigga want to learn, do wrong, and do right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah. You know. Ooh, that was funny. Um so no college for you. I you're did. you're in a band. You you doing your own thing. Yeah. I was I was around the college, but I wasn't in college. You know. Were and you were you enrolled? the guy on campus? Were you enrolled? No, no, I was enrolled. Oh, okay. He's enrolled. About okay. a year and a Okay. <laughs> what I drop out, man. <laughs> He's like, oh, right. anytime you do this, it's like, you do this. he came to class, we he still wasn't in class. To out the anytime enrollment. you turn into Ray Charles when you try to answer a question, <laughs> nigga, you lying like a motherfucker. You know, I was in class, you know. Oh, man. And we'll get That's out of here later, man. Met were you the man there, though? Just in terms of music. Like, were you, like, doing all the, you know, I know they got fashion shows on the campus. You know what it they is? got, you know. They got the Greek event. Is this like, black college? Yes. I mean, no, no, no. It's not no? a black college. It was right next to an HBCU. So okay. that trickled into this. It was just mm -hmm. like a college. Mm -hmm. But I was the one that they would uh, hire to perform for like a Valentine's Day gift for their girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Right? I did a lot of those. I did a lot of DJing for the local fraternity. DJ too? Yeah. Okay. This I is, loved it. This is like, getting... What? Out of control. DJing is amazing because you got to just study how people interact. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like you've been trying to get her attention for about an hour and a half. I got you. you I was a it. pandemic DJ. I had, I had, Ooh, a, I had a, that's a I different had. thing. You get to yeah, observe yeah, the I, comments. I was going on, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going on live. I see what y'all saying. The nastiest shit I could find. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all stuck in the house, huh? <laughs> it's cool <laughs> like that. T-shirt like, <laughs> and my titties <laughs> on. <laughs> it was a go-to. <laughs> It'd be like that, them t-shirts. <laughs> so you're at college. You're at college. At you're college. Not, you're not in, but you're at. For max. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm at there. I think, I wouldn't say I felt like the man, but I knew I was an outlier. I used to longboard and play saxophone at the same time. Hold on, man. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> that image is around on the net. You were Andre 3000, is what you're saying. There we go. Now we're painting it. Yeah, was, or, yeah, yeah. Is he rich or homeless? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Maybe he's both. Because it's because <laughs> that is the dynamic. This basketball photo you're making right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it, it, it's just hilarious, bro. Hey, man. What's, I thought we was. He's supposed to be 6'5. He's supposed to be brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be your height, is what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> he said, where'd the monkey come from? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Putting my arms and hands I away. didn't think it was going to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, you, had, you all had a question. I was, <laughs> no, I was just rich and homeless. Just Longboarding just and doing playing things. the sax. Yeah. But it's like... Just it, riding around Virginia. Yeah, it's, that's a hilarious line. But yeah, but I was it's, riding it's like those eclectic type things and guys, like all the girls are like, who's the guy to be riding the skateboard playing the saxophone? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't know. I got practice right now. I don't know who that nigga is. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But this guy, Eric Benet kind of guy, would get all the yams. Yeah. yeah. I used to be so mad at you. It wasn't you. <laughs> These guys like you. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I was just trying to find my way, man. Yeah. You know, and uh, I think I found it. So does that does that lead to any discovery in that college space or is that after the fact in terms of, you know, getting into the business? Start dropping your own music or? Yeah. I did, but I think it was beautiful that I could learn how trash it was. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like college humbled me because there were real artists in college with clothing lines and with software to mix their music. And with just a lot of professional artisticisms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I was getting to college thinking I was like the best in the world, all this like mm -hmm. confidence or whatever. But dropping music and losing talent competitions and all that, I liked that. I was like, oh, this is. Oh, you're taking L's too. I was taking so many L's, collecting them as I was longboard. I was like, that's mine? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. And so yeah. from that, the, the game theory in me activated where I was like, I got to defeat you. 
I got to mm. not lose this talent competition. I need to figure out my niche to figure out how to win. And I, I, I credit college for that because I said, okay, I got to make beats from scratch because I'm really good off the top of my head. Oh, I got to show you how many instruments I can play. I got to make a song about you right here so you know no one else can do this. Mm. And after that, I got mad comfortable. I was like, nobody can do this because nobody is doing this. Mm -hmm. Then I started to win. Gotcha. And then I was like, okay, I needed the, those losses to appreciate this win, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I was, I think I was singing Baby Faces songs when girls would ask me to sing to them. The timbre of your voice just told me a lot. Yeah, I mean, you just you just did. went straight. I, I was only doing original gospel music at the time, so if you wanted if you wanted to know anything about Jesus, I could hook you up. <laughs> 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 the movie makes sense now. <laughs> 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 I could hook you you up. want a little Holy Ghost? You know what I'm saying? I'll write that for you in a minute. <laughs> you want a love song? I'm a dog. I don't know if all, covers. Was, all, all, all covers. All covers. I hadn't hadn't even gotten to the space to where I had even explored that part of my creativity yet. That's cool. I just I just didn't know. Like I wasn't until what two years out of high school that I decided to try R and B. Mm. I was like, let me try it. Church ain't paying me enough, and I gotta eat. Darrell gotta eat. Yeah, they were starving you out. What? Hundred and fifty a Sunday? They paid me in chicken, but I understand what you're saying though. Wait, yep. wait, no. wait, wait, hold on, hold on. You heard a love offering, yeah. yeah. But the love was a chicken? Yes, it was. Yeah, that's real. I started out at $25 a Sunday. I fought years to end up at that $150. Mm. What you going to do with $150 hey, in these days? Yeah, they told me the Lord was going to provide. Mm. I said, well, when is that nigga coming through so I can... Talk to him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even been able to sell you niggas no weed or nothing, <laughs> man. You <laughs> <laughs> try to buy the buy the weed with a piece of chicken? <laughs> nah, player. You know I'm good for. <laughs> I used to trade chicken for a parking space oh, in Virginia shit. Beach. Man, here what? go. I here swear, go. bartering works. Well, you now. were getting a lot of chicken, is what you said. <laughs> yeah. I was getting the chicken, and now I'm getting the yams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, cool, real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> All right, so get so so we didn't trade a chicken for parking spaces. Um, oh, we have man. been collecting L's on our longboard. Oh man. Um, and, and 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 building to our W's. Yes, we have. And, you know, putting out our music, trying to figure out how to be a professional in this thing. Mm -hmm. What is what is your what is your breaking point? What is what is what is that pivotal moment that says, I'm in the music business now? Hmm. I think twenty eighteen was when I shifted from SoundCloud to the streaming. Mm -hmm. platforms like the main ones and that was my r&b album you know it was me trying to say i'm an artist i know i'm entertaining i know i'm talented but these are records and people are going to play these records in the future and it's going to be the thing and i feel like the tour i went on in 2018 solidified that i have to be looked at as an artist because mm -hmm. i'm like i'm selling out these venues people are tattooing the lyrics on them like it's all the you are an artist isms happening and purely independent. Yeah. At this point, yes. It's just, you know, me and the people you meet along the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, the record deal came maybe. But before you get there, before you get to the record deal, yeah. How did you know where to go? Yeah. Meaning how so? this tour, right? Mm -hmm. And saying, you know, you're selling out these venues. Were you using the analytics or were you just did you even know about the analytics yet of okay, I have this many fans, a thousand yeah. fans and such and such, so I can probably do a spot that fits two fifty. Yeah. Did you go through that process? Because we want to give these artists who are getting into the game an understanding of like how that. not to lose your ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go do a show in New York. Well, nigga, they don't know you in New York. What are you right talking after. about? Yeah. Go figure out. Did you or did you just take the chance? That's why. That's what I want to know. No, no, no. It's a great question. I I always looked at what the people were saying. Like SoundCloud, the way it was structured was as that song is playing, they can mm -hmm. comment if they like it, where they're from, whatever. Yeah. 
And so I would take that, gather some data. I was always trying to outsmart the system, mm -hmm. right? And I always would go where the love is. So to continue with answering that, I would say I would do a show and then figure out who was there. And from that, it would create the next show. And I think I would just let that be deciding where I should go. So my show on, on, on a rooftop in New York turned into a, a festival in D.C., because I was making a beat and this dude was like, yo, you should do this thing called Trilectro in DC. Mm -hmm. Then that festival got me attention to say, yo, come do this selection show in LA. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh yeah, there was mad love in LA from the SoundCloud comments. Cool. All right, should be fine. Go to LA. LA is like, okay, there's a dude from the UK that wants you to mm -hmm. do this thing. I said, all right, I'll go over there. Yeah. Losing money, by the way, on all of this. Yeah. The, the plane ticket sucked up all that cash. Mm -hmm. But I knew that people was the power. Mm -hmm. I've been knew that because I was just like, the only reason that I was succeeding was because women championed me. Yeah. They said, no, 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 he, this eclectic guy, we choose him. Mm -hmm. And so I always paid attention to what the people liked and where they were at. And I just go there. So I used to, it, it was literally a, a non-official tour. It was like this show did this. And then yeah. I was like, I've been on tour for two years. Wow. And that was, that was my story. So just paying attention to people, I think is good advice. I, re I read the comments. I organized the comments in a spreadsheet. I used to like make my old, old assistant, my best friend, just like categorize what type of songs they were responding to. We looked at everything like game footage. Like I was mm -hmm. very calculated in the beginning and I'm still today. So I think I answered that. No, I love that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. then add the other piece though with the information in terms of how you go from SoundCloud to the DSPs. <clears throat> yeah. Um,. You gotta like, you gotta talk to people. You have to almost harass people for information while you're not in the in crowd yet. And you have to read anything available and try to figure out the through line that connects it all. Cause it was definitely difficult at first figuring out what does this mean? What are the splits? What's the publishing? How do you figure out how to get this there? But I felt like trying to be open to trying to understand it, being vocal about that, whether it's social media or in, in your conversations, it was leading to more answers. Like mm -hmm. I met the dude that created the the STEM platform that allowed artists to upload things and they put it on the DSPs. Mm -hmm. I met him early. Mm -hmm. He was like on a beach in LA while I was doing my little street musician thing. So I just feel like, again, I a lot of this too, is though. just, you said who? I love that too though. What, oh, what the street musician? Street music, yeah. Yeah, you I know, love that. we'll get them. We're gonna yeah. mess. That's a lot of who I am. Yeah, but I've always been. It's all. It goes back to relationships or currency. You know what I'm saying? I was just yeah. like, I I haven't gotten to where I want to get to is because I haven't met the right person, and so I would always just go outside or do something clever on social media until I would get closer to the understanding that I lacked at the time. So yeah, when it comes to how did I get my stuff on DSPs, I used to email everybody. Long, annoying paragraphs of questions. I used to follow the person that this person followed and fought. Like, I used to try to do all the things. Yeah. And it led to a little bit more understanding. And, oh, I shouldn't do that. And, oh, I should do that. And I understand this one. And I would just compound it. Yeah. So. Wow. That. No, I love the due diligence, though. I love But that's the, the hunger yeah. you got to yeah, have. And that's the hunger. I was very hungry, yeah. Because. I wasn't chicken. Like, it. it you have to be in, I mean, first, the people business is what we subscribe to. We're in the people business. Yeah. yeah. Everything else is a byproduct of that. Mm -hmm. You got to get the people there or get to the people in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And that's where you build. But to ask, to, to not be afraid to ask those questions, to not be afraid to take those chances mm -hmm. is a different kind of hunger because then you have to start chipping away at the pride and ego that goes along with you point. feeling like you're good at your craft yeah but understanding you're not there yet that's what virginia did though yeah like in terms of joking ability they're great in the dmv like they'll tell you exactly how much they don't like what you're wearing or what you're sounding like the comments will cook you yeah it's all, and I needed that mm -hmm. because a lot of people, this is what's in the way. They think they're so amazing and untouchable. They don't need to go overseas because America's only all that matters. All that. If you defeat that, I really feel like that's when you begin to grow. And mm -hmm. so once I got all of my ego just, just destroyed, then I got to build it back up in a, a, 
a better way. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I know that I've spent 10,000 hours on being in front of people making beats from scratch. So I'm not scared about that. I'm not scared to talk to people. I'm not scared of the the no's. I don't care if somebody thinks I'm annoying or lame. It's just like, you know what I mean? I've already went through that. So I think that's why that that was that, you know, that hyperbolic period of just building up my, you know, uh, industry strength. I don't know. Hyperbolic. You went to school a little bit. He went to one of the classes. Hyperbolic is not like, I mean, you know. You just ain't walking and chilling on the corner. Just niggas just like, yeah, I mean, what you doing with your hyperbolic today? Like, yeah, that's not. It's just, <laughs> I've, I've done a lot of museum dates. You know? <laughs> it's a lot, I've done a lot of museum I'm ear hustling. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> subsidiary. Yeah. Subsidiary. Say that about to add that to my shit. To my repertoire. My repertoire. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Trust me. I'm, that's where you get the words from. <laughs> from the museums. Cacophony? Oh, Come here. First big record. To me, Love Be Like hmm. It's from SoundCloud, and that was what made me drop out of school. Because it got 100,000 plays in a day. I'm out this bitch. I'm, I'm out. out. <laughs> <I'm gone. clears throat> I know I was here. I said, <laughs> not no more. Not no more, I'm out. 100, Communications 000. 101. <laughs> 100,000. I'm out. Drop out. <laughs> I was coming here for this. I got it. I'm out. I was coming here Y'all for this. Y'all ain't even give me a scholarship. Man, what? Yeah, yeah. Peace. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> you said Peace? Peace. <laughs> With a T. Whoa. Yeah. Like Tyson. Peace. I'm going to add that to my repertoire. Are you kidding me? 100,000 yeah. in one day? That's all. That To me, I was like, I'm famous. Yeah. That's what I told myself. Yeah. And then when Girls That Dance came out, I said, oh. It's over. I'm it. Yeah. Well, give me the plaque. But I knew at the time <laughs> that I'm missing something to get this plaque because why ain't it here yet? <laughs> but we'll, we'll be all right. right. But yeah, no. Between Love Be Like and Girls That Dance, like those are the ones where I was like, okay, this is what fame is. Mm-hmm. And then when I started to see, it can just keep getting redefined. Um, and the, the, I've been trying to do this for like months now. I'm trying to like find a way to compare the music industry to sports. I'm like, is it basketball? Is it football? Just so I can gauge the wins a little bit better because it's so nuanced and did we win? Is this is this the plaque that says we got the ring? Are these your rings, or is this like a a trophy? Is this the MVP award? And so I I, I tried mm-hmm. to do that, and I felt like if I had a metric that I wanted to hit, and I hit it, that's the ring. And so Love Be Like was the first one. Mm-hmm. And I was like a hundred K, like that's it. And then it just kept increasing and increasing. Yeah. So, yeah I mean, it's, it's multiple yeah. championships. Absolutely. But the difference is in music. You're truly competing with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, truly. Like we can say, oh, well, the Grammy and the, you know, I won this award at the end of the year, and I guess that would probably be perceived to be what our Super Bowl is and our, Mm -hmm. you know, NBA championship. But the truth of the matter is that you're you're really competing with yourself of where you feel that, you know, that success lies. Like you said, for you to see that hundred thousand, that's your Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was life changing for yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think with music, we put too much on, you know, everybody else's things. Yeah, you know, instead of just being like, "This is what satisfies me. Mm-hmm. This is what I believe mm-hmm. is the greatest shit in the world." Yeah, you know what I mean? Like that. You even having having that story and explaining that. Like, yeah, when you saw that 100,000, because we can have so many yeah. of those moments in the music business yeah. that in, you know, like in the NBA, you just make, you can make it to the league and then you try to get your contract and then you try to, and then you, but in, in music every day, you can be satisfied by that song you just wrote. Yeah. Or this room being like, nigga, that's the one. There's satisfaction in that, that we have in music that we, that I don't, I don't think, mm. I personally, that I don't think that you know other forms have mm. that that it, that instant gratification. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know, I know how I feel to dunk. I dunk the basketball. It's talk cool. About talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Talk about but, it. But you know, seeing a record go the way that they go, and and then seeing people react to it the same. You know what I mean? Or even crazier. Like I've never. I always say this. I've never seen a woman throw their panties at somebody for dunking a basketball she might have thrown her panties about the contract he signed mm, talk about it 
But panty I've talk. seen panties get thrown off of a ooh yeah. Come on, we having come panty on. talk. Okay, we're okay. okay. we gonna we always have panty talk. Oh, this, 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 this is the R and B money podcast. Come on, muscles a little. Come step on, get out of the jacket. He been lifted. Come out the jacket. Come on, we having panty talk. We having panty talk. Get that out of here. Because the panty talk, give it to him. The other thing about music too, though, is that. We can get it all broke. Okay. We can get it all broke. I understand. Talk about it. You know what I mean? We can, we can dive into that. Yeah. You know what I mean? When it's like, oh, damn, you date him? That's cool. I probably can't afford to go to the game he playing in. But you like this song I wrote, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Because at the end of the day. Talk about it. Come on. It all comes down to the yams. Y'all good at what y'all do. We, this is a good show. It's R and B. I don't just, care how you cut it. You know what I mean? I don't care how you slice it. Still a yam. Still a yam, man. Still a yam. You yeah. Fr- you freshly braided. I know her too. I know why. <laughs> yeah. Just in case that yam is looking. Yeah. <laughs> Just in mm-hmm. case. <laughs> it's the playoffs right now, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> He said, you freshly break. Yeah, yeah. We know why. It's always the playoffs for us. Always the playoffs. <laughs> always. As in being in competition with yourself, it's just it's just the progressions that make it all make sense. Mm-hmm. It's getting a hundred more people in the building. Yeah. It's getting a hundred more spins that week. It's, you know, I I don't, I mean, I like the award. I love the award shows. I love it. I, I, I get I get what it is, but I've seen so many historians and even current artists have so much success without it. Great success. Yeah. So it goes back to what you're saying. Like, yeah, it's 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 about you. It's about your progressions yeah. and your upgrades and yeah. continuing to to be better and build better and that word continuing to spread of who you are and what you do yeah. and them and them venues getting bigger and bigger. You know, what like I'm I don't know you through the numbers. Yeah, yeah. I know you I, through the woman. Have you heard it out? <laughs> yes, I have. Mm. Here, yeah. I like that record. This man is dropping Let's bars play today. Yeah. Like, but seriously though, and that mm-hmm. that is something that um that you've established mm-hmm. within your artistry and your career. That's special. You said it earlier. You were like, you know, I I knew women were supporting me. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that 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 you 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 had your target audience. Mm-hmm. You stuck to it, and they 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 become your introduction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was it wasn't like you know the radio introduced me to you or some playlist or that it literally the woman it was just he's dope he's dope if you heard him that's simple yeah and then it became if you didn't hear him you You don't know about that no panties for you (laughs) yeah oh man like you've done hey bro listen you got done some fly shit bro i appreciate that some fly shit really shout out women man shout out women (sighs) talk to talk yeah 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 What's been your most successful record? Successful? Um, definitely Girl, Tidal. Tidal, okay. Just mm-hmm. because of uh, the impact into places that I wouldn't otherwise find myself. Certain countries that I wouldn't have been to, certain people wouldn't have discovered me. Like It just opened up the most doors. And it's such a great introduction when someone's trying to understand that I'm a little left of center with my approach to R&B. Mm-hmm. It's like, watch that video. <clears throat> you see exactly what he'd be doing. He makes up songs. He's inspired by women because you see her walking by the window, the whole video, he plays a bunch of instruments, and it's quick. I was like, cool. If, if that's all you know me from, fine by me. It's a good intro. What's the inspiration of that record? Um, The flight to Paris for the first time because I hadn't been. And When was that? When was this? 2017, maybe? Nice. Okay. And the woman walking by the window. Because I didn't think there were black people in Paris at the time. And I was surprised. I was like, oh. And so I got to show off. Because I know you see me, see you, see you. So I'm about to play all these instruments and just look at the window the whole time. Glasses on. I'm just like, it's for that. Yeah. And everybody behind me was just like, just gasping. Like, what is, what's happening? Because I met old dude, FKJ. Five minutes prior, 
didn't speak English wait, wait, very what? well. He said five minutes. Yeah. So okay. as we're getting introduced to each other, he's warming his guitar up and that's the riff of the song. Oh, shit. And so I'm like, all right, we ain't got to talk then. Let's just, come on. I got drums. <laughs> Start punching the drum machine. And so, yeah, it was just uh, an aligned moment. I said, y'all got all my favorite things here. Women, tea, <laughs> instruments. So let's just give him, let's just give him some backstory. <laughs> You know, he, he walks onto the pod. Uh, he walks in here, and we're like, "Man, we got, we got water, we got uh, we, we got libations." You know what I'm saying? We did, we we keep the tequila on deck, a little whiskey, aged whiskey. You know what I'm saying? We like our whiskey of age. Yeah. And he says, "Yeah, yeah, I feel all that, but where's the tea?" I said, "What?" He said, "This is supposed to be R and B money. You ain't got no tea." <laughs> You know what? I do have tea, motherfucker. And a love I got, cup. I got, I got tea and I got a love cup. <laughs> you gonna trump me? Think I ain't ready? I just bought throw coats with lemon and echinacea. Oh, and I got mint tea. I got chamomile. That's what, you know what I'm saying. I got ginger tea for digestion, just in case you know what I'm saying. Your bowels ain't active. I got tea. All right. So this man loves tea. Every time you see him, just make sure. Maybe he'll come out with a brand of teas. Are we branding something right now? If they cut in the check. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Fuck they check. Yeah. If they start in the LLC, <laughs> you can find me. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, but you got beverages, don't you? You got you got some you got your own thing going, right? What I got? I don't know if I got nothing. What I, what I got? What I got? <laughs> yeah, we got stuff closing, opening. Okay, we can't talk about it yet. Actually, but, oh, you talking about the joint in the overseas situation? Yeah, yeah. Listen, man, yeah. I'm big for health and as a man that acquired a little bit more access, mm -hmm. uh, I've noticed that uh, white people got all the healthy things just right next to themselves. Yeah. And I was like, I want black people to have this knowledge, these resources, mm -hmm. all this. Mm -hmm. And I think it comes down to affecting culture. Because I think, um, yeah, that, I love all the plant-based vegan talk because our interpretation, unfortunately, is just replacing comfort food with just impossible meat. And I don't think that's the... That's the word. Do anybody know what's in that? It's it's <laughs> it's, it's it ain't echinacea. Do, do Ray Charles real quick. <laughs> you know, you know, it's it's not. It, uh, 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 you cannot put it in. The, uh, uh. Hold on, man. Uh, uh, don't you oh, man. don't you oh, find it suspicious? Oh, black man, black don't man. Don't you find it suspicious oh, that yeah. we don't get all the help? Yeah. Why yeah. it costs so much? Hmm. Why fast food is so affordable and near us? Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. you find it suspicious? I, yeah, I find it suspicious, my brother. Can I can I call you brother Tank? You can call me brother Tank. Absolutely. I find it suspicious that mm -hmm. we can't even have nothing. Mm. All we know is CMOS. Mm. That is the beginning of the journey. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, yeah. I just beginning wanted beginning of the journey. But the braids are fresh. I can't waste it. It was expensive. Yeah. Hey man. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. your get down, man. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's so but, suspicious. But you're, but you're absolutely, absolutely right, right, though. Yeah, it's 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 like we have these um, what's hot in healthy food. But and, we're like that with everything. everybody jumps on it. But, yeah. but really, with that with the healthy food yeah. now, this yeah. shit is crazy. Yeah, see, Moss, bruh, um, impossible, beyond, like, and, and it just really stays there. Mm -hmm. It's like what you say. I don't know nothing else. Oh yeah, black seed, black seed. Black. Well, I mean, because it's like even with all of those things, you still have to research. Yeah, yeah. you still got to do blood work. Right, you still got to understand. Yeah. You know, your composition. You have to go to the doctor. Black you people. Go to the doctor. Black people. We got to go to the doctor. We can't be scared yep. of the doctor. You can't pray it away. Talk okay? about. It. Listen, if if God gave you all of this, let's just say we're right. starting that with is God, the, right? That is the prayer. God gave you the doctor. He said, yeah, man, I I, I blessed old boy to understand the biology of a thing so that you can go to him and be made whole. That's, I did that. Yeah. Yep. But, you know, when with getting into these health spaces, like, you have to understand your body first. And so, you know, before you start doing anything, I'd suggest everybody go get blood work. Yeah. Go see what you're missing. Go see what you're needing. Go see what you don't need. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, you know, getting into that space is a great space. I'm, I'm going more into that space as well. That's I've, where I'm at. I've been doing a whole lot of showing, but not necessarily giving a whole lot of information because everybody's always trying to feel like, how you always stay buffed? And I'm like, listen, ain't no drug testing in R&B. So 
<laughs> now, <laughs> now, you know what I'm saying? Now, <laughs> now I'm going to start giving the information. That's good. You know what I'm saying? So that <laughs> About the drugs you take? Yeah, that too. Yeah, I mean, this, this, Come on. you can get either way. You Kill know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to let you pick your poison, but get yeah. your blood work done first. You know what I'm saying? You can't. Gut sensitivity. <laughs> Gut sensitivity. <laughs> That's what the issue's at. <laughs> All right, man. This nigga on dope. Let's talk. Come on. Let's get, ordered, that, let's get to that doctor. Let's get to that doctor. Save me that But you, you opening, <laughs> you opening a spot. Yeah. I am opening a spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I was very impacted by the community in Brazil, and what I noticed with the black people out there, they ain't even on the comfort vegan food stage of enlightenment yet. So I wanted to like impact culture versus just be out there doing the guys trip or whatever else and actually take the people that I'm really, really friends with out there Mm -hmm. and give the access that I've acquired over just traveling a lot, getting sick, getting healthy, learning. And I like the, I like community and eating. Like that's where you can learn. That's one of the barbershops of our community. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I wanted to do that, impact something. Um, And yeah, make a space for black folk. How is Brazil? It's, it's black. Like 1960, let's do it. I might do put it. the hat back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1960, the West Africans were settled in, settled in meaning uh, they were slave traded. Yeah, yeah. You know, that vibe. They dropped off. Yeah, they were dropped off there. But they ended up just settling there and having all that culture remain. But the West Africans are there. Jamaicans, I'm Jamaican. Jamaicans are linked to Nigerians and Ghanaians. So I'm looking out there and it's like my cousins. It's like, you look like my uncle. And so I feel a lot of belonging cues from Brazil. Um, The standard of living is different because everybody walking everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like our hoods are like on flat ground. Their hoods are in the mountains. In the mountains. So they walking every day, six flights of stairs, abs, crazy. Everybody in the favela is just healthier just because of that walking. Um, I feel like your, your proximity to unmodified food is a little closer, which I, I admire. Um, and I would just say there's just a, a a deeper level of affection and intimacy that is not just what we think. It's from like the mating in captivity book. Like just a gaze is like, well, this is way more intimate than just like the, all right, yeah, cool, yeah, whatever. So I just think there's a lot of me, there's a lot to grasp from there that I, I felt called to do. And yeah, Brazil's special. A lot of history. I've never been. You should go. Yeah, I, I have. I have all the like the right people out there for a, an actual experience, not a DR experience. No shade. Not a Mexico experience. No shade. But like, it's it's a certain black culture there that I think would impact people. Mm-hmm. Salvador Bahia, and specifically. Then we can do the Sao Paulo and Rio, Brazil. We, we can figure out what James Brown was talking about. But mm-hmm. like, there's a lot of history that we don't speak about because there's just this image of a woman in carnival, and we just think that's it. Yeah, that's but it's that a way exactly. more. Yeah, yeah, but it's cool. It's just like I'm, I'm a curious guy. I've been that way. I'm like, I want to know what that really is like. Why was James Brown talking about it in that light? Why was this song referencing this location? I just go. Hang out with people, figure out. And I try to get it past the service level because it's like whatever they show you on TikTok from their guys' trips or from the internet, you just started right here. You know about nothing. And I want to know more than just what's available to everybody so I can give back to the people I care about. Yeah. Genuinely. So you going? I'm going. I got a 10-year visa there. Like, I'm serious. I did the things. Yeah. That's dope. That's guess dope. We're, guess we're going to visit. Come on. Let's say going <laughs> Brazil. I can get that off. My wife will go with that. Masego said he need me to come down there because he want me to play drums. Want me to play drums <laughs> <laughs> for three weeks. <laughs> for three weeks. <laughs> hey, one of my partners told me about his daddy wanted to make an album for a year and a half. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then one day he just showed back up. What up? <laughs> <laughs> The music business. The music business. It's crazy. <laughs> what a crazy business. It's crazy business. Crazy Imagine business. being a musician without FaceTime. Without, you know, without FaceTime. The same type of telecommunications. Quincy Jones. Like literally Imagine just going that. somewhere. That's what our musicians used to do. Yeah. Quincy Jones went to France and yeah. learned strings for two years. <clears throat> 
<laughs> he had a full family. <laughs> I do back. not have a family in Brazil. <laughs> I'll be back. There's no kid there. Everybody think. Uh, <laughs> like imagine being. It was a different time for musicians back then, man. Yeah. From again, all I know is from documentaries. <laughs> yeah. But Quincy had sheet music with him. No, that's that's what he did. That's yeah. a different guy. Like, but he had it like on him. Yeah. Trumpet yeah. right here, sheet music. This is just the documentary. Yeah. So that's a different temperament. And if you in France, that temperature plus that sheet music equals family. I don't know about the no. Better, he had family, no oh, family here, and left them for two years. Yeah. With the only thing you know, you you could miss those phone calls days on end. <sighs> You know what I'm saying? Different. You miss, you missed yeah. all them birthdays for yeah. sure. Yeah. Anniversaries. It's a different. It was a different type of um, dedication. Dedication. Like it's a different type of dedication. Like you have to consider the it's, ramifications of wanting to be that great. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's damage that comes along with that kind of greatness. Because, like you said, I you don't about you, you don't have a family yet. Yeah. No. Yeah. And is this why you feel like it's easier for you to make these type of moves? For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. I, it, everything in my life has compounded based on my experience. I have homies that have kids already and they can't tour as much as I would want them to tour. Mm -hmm. And I understand it. I feel like I try to learn from the people around me, the mentors, and be filled with gratitude that, you know, I'm who I am. My life is set up the way it is um, and that I have more time to build space or ecosystem for my family to be a part of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is what, mainly my hesitancy with the starting a family thing. It's just like, I don't understand the education thing all the way. I don't know who my kid's friend's going to be. I, I can't stand these phones. Yeah. I'm like a Luddite low key when it comes to just technology. I'm just like, I don't know. If, like we, not, I'm going to say we like, I feel like we all have experienced technology in a way that's just a little sample of it. It wasn't like you're immersed in this, you know, artificial world. And I feel like nowadays it just there's a fear with how that impacts a family when it's introduced from the get go. So that's a lot of my hesitancy. I'm like, I don't know how to tame technology yet. And I don't know where I can like build up my castle. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just got little little studios. Mm -hmm. little eyes, eyes. But the you know, you're talking to two fathers. And mm -hmm. As someone who doesn't have kids in this, it is your your path is definitely different. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, we just went on tour and I flew home every weekend. I mean, I flew home every, which would be the tour weekend. Mm -hmm. We're doing Thursday through Sunday. Mm. I flew home every Monday, and I flew back out every Wednesday night. It's a lot. You know what I mean? And I probably spent thirty thousand dollars on flights. You know what I mean? Yeah. And countless hours on the plane. But I needed to do that personally mm -hmm. to still feel as if I was playing my part in my kids' lives. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But it it, it is it can be taxing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And especially if you, you know, however type of father you want to be. Yeah. And I think those type of things aren't discussed within our industry either. No. Nah. Especially amongst our men, yeah. right? You You'll see, you know... Young lady will have a kid, and now they got the, you know, they they got they got to keep the baby with them, or are they trying to, or they, you know what I mean, or they're only going out in certain things. And I think it's it's such a different thing for the fathers in the music business of how much do you give of yourself mm -hmm. to this business and to your music, because you can be very, I, I, I guess the music business is set up for us to be selfish. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and self-centered because you have to put in 10,000 hours as they would say. Yeah. Multiple times, as many times you can get it out of it. You know what I mean? So it, but it, and it makes it tough for everyone else attached to you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'd say, "Hey man, enjoy, enjoy Brazil." You know what I'm saying? Until yourself. until you're willing to Yeah. you know, share of yourself in that way where you like, you know, some things I'm just not going to be able to do. Take your time. Your business structure now, because you mm. know you've done a lot of independent work. Yes, a lot of independent work. What is your business structure now? Well, to 
deeper answer because I'm restructuring my business. No. As you should. Okay. As you should. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. at the most uh I keep doing this. I'm That's at the great. most enlightened mm -hmm. I've been when it comes to like observing how I want this to actually go. But anyway, my business structure, I got um I'm signed to a record label. I am I have a Who's that record label? It's Capital Records. Yeah. Okay. Yes, nice. Yes. Nice. I have a management mm -hmm. group. Group. I have a business management group, so that's separate group. over there. Mm -hmm. um, my lawyer is a black woman. She is separate over here. Talk to talk, yeah. Uh, we have a, a, a touring. I think it was a UTA is what they call it these days. Mm -hmm. UTA. Got I that. Those guys. Yeah. And yeah, it's just a matter of trying to make all these people have a, a North Star to look at. Because I think the, the business structure I was doing before was, y'all handle everything, I'm going to be a kid. And just make sure y'all don't steal from me because I'm going to get mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get mad. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just simple as that. But then these days it's like, okay, I got to be more of a leader with the, the standard, the culture of it. And so I'm restructuring right now to say, okay, I want to choose the people I'm working with versus inherit them. So I think the issue in the past is like, I like they, that. they play musical like chairs that. with it too I like much. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? I like that. That's why the sports yeah. thing I love so much because it's yeah. like, yo, Phil Jackson chose these individuals to then lead and take to the next level. Yeah. So I try to mirror that activity versus, oh, we we just hired this person that yeah. we didn't tell you about. Or when, you're, or when your boutique company gets swallowed up by, mm -hmm. which yeah, happens yeah. all the time. They yeah. try, they've, they've tried to take us a couple times. Mm-hmm. We wasn't going. Yeah, it's just, and it's too much out of my control. And I, I didn't like that because I'm like, I want to, I want to unify everybody and do all of my superpowers with making you feel at home here. Mm -hmm. But I got to have chosen you before I do all the, the masego mm -hmm. So the restructuring is one, I'm, I'm reading that everything you need to know about the music business book thoroughly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm having some different uh, like business consultants look at who I'm working with and the dynamic and just saying, okay, what can we improve upon? And then trying to make a schedule for us meeting in person more so it's not just so much text and Zoom call thing. Because I feel like the main restructuring is let's make sure that we know what's, what's this North Star. We're, we're going towards that. It's not about you looking good in your resume, you doing your job, completing it, you making sure you're, you know, you're covered. But it's like we are a, a, a squad. And whether it's the small wins that we're trying to get together or it's the, the main wins with the Grammy and the whatever – I want to be in tune about that versus again, we're just kind of step cousins. You know what I mean? So that yeah. that's the that's the restructuring. So yeah. right now I got everybody on the squad. I got, you know, I'm signed, nobody's stealing from me. I audited my label one time. I did all the things. And I like how we're moving. Yeah. It's just now it's time to improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thankfully, you know, I don't I don't have any like crazy stories like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I looked under the hood and yeah, yeah, it was locusts. Like, yeah, nah, nah. yeah, embezzlement was real. Yeah, no. Nah. So yeah. I, no, but you know, you seem you seem like an artist who pays attention to what's going on around him. Try to be. Thank you. You know what I mean? That, and that's that's extremely important. Like you had your moment where you were just like, all right, guys, don't steal from me. But I'm sure you were still paying attention <laughs> because obviously your situation would probably be different if you weren't. Yeah. So for you to be in that position, man, you know, congratulations on that for because sure. everybody doesn't move in that same space. Yeah. You know, some people just get caught up in the glamour of it all. Mm -hmm. And they'll deal with the business side of it, which is definitely not glamorous not later, you know. Uh, so congratulations on that. And congratulations on being able to restructure and renegotiate. Yeah. Because that is a very Leverage. strong term Leverage. in this business. People don't understand. When you get in it, it's going to be more advantageous to the investor. Mm -hmm. It's just what it is. It's like, why would I invest in you if it's not coming back to me at a higher rate? Would make oh, because you're talented. Okay, not next that. talented person. You know what I mean? But when you show them that you can be successful, mm -hmm. um, it's time to renegotiate. It's mm -hmm. like okay, these deal these terms aren't favorable for me anymore, and now they understand that because they're like, you know what, they aren't because. Yeah, at first you were selling out this, but now you're selling out that. Yep. And the conversation is different. I, you know, I, I have an issue sometimes with the artists who who 
from the jump just think they should own everything. It's like, well, did you pay for yeah. everything? Mm -hmm. If you pay for everything, 100% you should By own means. everything. Mm -hmm. But if someone else had to put their money in, they got to get their money back. And, yeah. and it has to be some kind of clauses where they make money for their initial investment, that they'll continue to make something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, you know, and you know, I've I've said on both sides of it. So yeah. it's always it's always tough to to talk to people who haven't. Either way, mm -hmm. you know what I mean to talk to just business people too. Yeah, the like, I'm like, bro, you can't own this person forever. No, but you should be able to make your money, however many times over a couple mm -hmm. times, and then you know renegotiate it and give them a better deal. So that that part for me is always like it's, it's like ah. You know, it, it get a little hairy at times and get tricky, but it's it's good to talk to artists who have a better understanding of how this shit goes. Yeah. Or how it truly goes. Because I'm telling you, like, what I thought it was versus what I found out is night and day. Night and day. For Completely sure. different. Night For day. sure. Completely different. Yeah. I was like, even from the taxes perspective, I'm glad I ain't ball out on the, on the house and the car thing that I couldn't afford. Like, because the check I got... And versus the tax, what they let you have, mm -hmm. I was like, huh, they don't talk, talk about this in the songs or the movies. <laughs> they don't talk. Was this the third verse? And nigga, I I'm paid three that million in, in taxes. <laughs> I've never heard that. Have you? I got to put it in a song. <laughs> I've never, that's a floss, though. That's a floss. If you can say you paid three million in taxes. Yeah, she liked me because my taxes is paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's actually true, though. I don't know. <laughs> It should be overhead low. That's yeah, what I gotta financial literacy. Financial yeah. literacy. <laughs> overhead low. I she, like that one. She on that. <laughs> she on that. We gotta figure this out. No, I, saw, I, yeah, yeah, you know, I see it. Yeah. Young men just in a, in a room with drums and shit, just figuring out taxes. <laughs> 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 to be young, oh, that thumbs up was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so what's next? What's next? Um, immediately. What's next? Immediately? What do you need people to? get their minds uh, ready for immediately, adjusted to? Hmm. Ah, that's a great question. What do they need to be ready for? I think you need to be ready to further the evangelizing of Masego. Hmm. Share it with somebody. Share it with somebody. Start with the first album and then mm -hmm. get to this recent one. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, know, the self-titled. The self-titled. Self -titled. Learn yeah. the lyrics. Look yeah. at the backstory. Watch the interviews. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. What is coming up next for me? I don't know. I mean, again, just more you, more me. Yeah. I'm just trying to. I'm I'm in world building mode. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm literally just trying to say, okay, now that I'm at this point, we know he plays saxophone. We know the Tadao song. We know the Masegoisms, whatever. Let's make a place that people can go to. Is it a festival? Is it a clothing thing? Is it the restaurant? Is it whatever? But be prepared for that. And uh, you know. Tell somebody about Masego. Masego. Let the women know. Masego. Let are the you, men know. The women know. Still, are you still pushing trap jazz heavy? Like just the just the term? I mean, because that's that's your thing. Yeah. I've never heard of anyone else being trap jazz. I, I pre or may, maybe. Oh shit! It's always oh. somebody that said no, they, no, they, no, they, no. they created it. You know, because <laughs> this nigga Masego oh, came shit. on in. <laughs> nigga Masego came and took the shit, man. I've been I, trap I jazz. Showed him the whole thing. Nigga ain't even had no drum machine. <laughs> I know who that is. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> My thing is, I, I think Trap House Jazz represents an approach to how I make music. Mm -hmm. Just combining, being eclectic, uh, derived from many sources, and knowing that there's black people all over the world, and to make a place of belonging for all those types of black people. Mm -hmm. That's my main thing when it comes to Trap House Jazz. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Genre bender genre list, all this, whatever you have to call me or whatever the mm -hmm. new movement is, I'm just happy that Masego is the, the strongest representative of what I do. Yeah. If they say Masego in that Tadao video, cool. If they may say Masego in the saxophone, at least it makes saxophone players look a lot more than just being on like 80s sitcom and being a little bit more in, in the cheesier smooth jazz, no disrespect. But nah, all disrespect, it's a little too cheesy. 
Wow. So, you know, jazz was cool. And then somebody was like, wait, let me put my white hands on that. Let me see what I can do to it. All disrespect. I fuck with that. <laughs> yeah, bro. The other, the other thing that, no I, that I, I really fuck with about you too, though, is um, how collaborative you are. I oh, appreciate it. Yeah. I think that's really dope. Got some um, I wish that more artists were that way. Yeah. Your generation for sure is becoming more collaborative. I think so. Um, you know, the generations before were just... You know, you I, put, yeah. I get the I get the girl in high school and then none of y'all guys can talk to her. It's it. literally that. That's it's it. like hip hop yeah. dudes collab oh, yeah. all the time. They share, share the money. They share her. But they share R&B they share dudes. Her. That's a hello. Yeah. That's a different thing. Yeah. But R and B cats be like, these are my women. Leave me alone, man. My section, my bottles. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yo, we could be in a whole lineup, and we then could, we could be, yeah, grow we, it. We could all do this together. We can all riff and, and run a little bit, and that's really dope. That. Like I said, your generation, especially you, like, mm-hmm. and the way you'll pop up, mm. you won't always pop up as a vocalist, yeah. which is cool. You'll pop yeah. up as, you know, I'm getting my saxophone on. I might rap a little bit. Yeah. I might, yeah. I'm, just, I'm a vibe. Because that's yeah. what I do. I'll yeah. show up sometimes. What do, you, what do you mean? That's what you do. You sing all the time. No, sometimes bro. I'll show up and rap. No, that's, you that's, don't. Yes, I do. You have no rap, I rap features. I rap as well. I don't feel Name same, one you. rap feature. It's it's two I'm working on. <laughs> Did uh, I just just as like a, a science project? Kids, Why are you looking at me kids, telling me this? Kids, kids, Cause he I know like, I know he lying. <laughs> <'Cause> I, <laughs> shit. I feel like there's a chance you might believe me. You know what I'm saying? But you know, these kids are working on a science fair project, and you know, me rapping the nuance of rap is kind of like a thing mm. that. I'm not gonna go too deep into it because it's really classified information. So I just you know just want to let. And I appreciate know. you revealing. Yeah. On R and B Money Podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Play your goddamn man. piano, man. Uh, first of all, <laughs> thumbs up to my rap career. Let's start there. I thought you did a middle finger. Bro. Your top five <clears throat> R- R&B, R&B singers. singers. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, first person that came to mind was D'Angelo. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I'll start there. Okay. Definitely. That's okay. where I would start. Okay. Second person popped in my mind was Jay Moss. Ooh. Mm. Well, act like that. You're out of control. Definitely. Mm. Third, I'm going to go with Jamie Foxx. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's the cat. The cat. That's the cat, Jay. Yeah. It's musician talk. Musician talk. Yeah. Impact, Mary J. Blige. Yeah. Mm. Gotta do it. And then number five spot, gotta go Stevie. Yeah. 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 Stevie's undefeated. Undefeated. In so yeah. many worlds. Yeah. It's, it's just... He's just multifaceted people. Yeah, he's, I try to mm-hmm. choose. It's multi everything. Yeah, and he can yeah. see. So, but we'll get to that. Anyway, your top five, top five uh, R and B songs. Okay. 
top five R and B songs. Mm -hmm. I gotta access some cool to get this answer. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I need both for this one. <laughs> Excuse me. I image. So it's like <clears throat> it's like you ski, <laughs> but <laughs> you you have the Ten Commandments written <laughs> on your ski. Okay. Betray my heart. D'Angelo. I think that's a good one. Hmm. I think it's suspicious we don't talk about that song enough. Uh, <laughs> that's just me. I would say, um, hmm. Was it was it what you wanna be? Y'all? Y A W? Have you heard of this record? No. Where's my cellular device? Can you pass it? I was listening to it uh on the morn. Mm. All the while. But yes, it is very beautiful. It is, where would you be? Y-A-W. Oh, I love that you don't know this song. You should listen to it. It's very, it could be a cover and I could just be a youngster. We'll see mm. later. Okay. Cool. Uh, Butterflies MJ. Why not? Yes, have to. Why not? Need it. Come on, Marsha. Fancy the Dream. Mm. Yeah. That's a good love one. Love that yeah. song. That yeah. one. What a vibe. Yeah. 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 Would love to hear live. Sheesh. Missed. Mm. In J Moss, Florida. Huh. Yeah. Let's go to Florida. Talks about the temptations. Really liked that one. It was an R and B thing. There was a lot of controversy about him singing that. Love well, that. He should be able to sing whatever he wants hey, to sing. Hey man. It's an instrument. It's an instrument. It's an Many instrument. keys. And he's amazing. Do, that, do whatever that you want to do, J Moss. Wanted to be him growing up. I said. How many of you is that in that choir? You just said yes. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. I felt that. Yeah. All right, we gotta we're gonna build. We're gonna build your perfect R and B artist. We call it the R and B Voltron. And you have to pick artists where you're going to extract Huh. Uh Okay. The necessities from. The materials. We're gonna we're going to see who you're going to get the vocal from, mm, mm. who you're going to get the styling from, mm. who you're going to get the performance style from, and who you're going to get the heart of the artist from, the passion. This so, is good. Yeah, yeah, so let's start with the vocal. If you're building your perfect R&B artist, who are you going to get the vocal from? That one artist. Who the lead singer? Mm-hmm. Man. Mm-hmm. It ain't going to be Otis. Who, 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 who they come to see? I got to be honest. Give me the vocals from Kells. Ooh. I know. La da 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 da. Yeah. La. Oh, la la la. Oh, now. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to find out huh. Huh. the hard way, hard way, oh, now. Yeah. Listen, Listen to, the to the song. Listen to the, the song. record, please. Mm -hmm. When a woman. Mama taught me a long time ago. <laughs> Gotta throw that lamb in there. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. I cannot Robert, tell a lie. Robert Lee Vocal. Got it. Got yep. it. Who are you getting the performance style from? <sighs> that performance style. Um, give me Maxwell. Hmm. Yeah. With, the new with, Maxwell with, with the, the, with the, the Megan with knees? The, with the with Megan knees, Maxwell? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen... Yeah. And I said, this has longevity. Yeah. I don't want the first tour knees. Mm-hmm. You <laughs> man. Get that out of here. Shit. Get that out of here. Drop down and get your eagle on, man. <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh shit, man. You gotta do your No, answer. I'm not. I'm not. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Almost lost me there. I respect it though. I respect it. Okay. <clears throat> Who are you getting the styling from? The drip of the artist. The styling from. Get me on. No, 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 no. Can't do that, no. The styling from the R and B. Cause we're a we're an odd bunch with the outfits. Whatever artist you want to throw in there, though. It don't got to be. I mean, listen, you, you're making your perfect R&B artist for you. It's yeah. yours. Who's got the trip? Mm, mm, R&B. No, no, that wasn't really doing it for me back in the days. Eh? Okay, okay. Give me those threads from Jay Holiday. 
the flannel with the hoodie in the back. The, the um, hoodie that I'm come a, out of the flannel. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. Uh-huh. I'm up. I'm up. Suffocate. Suffocate. I already, I do exactly what we do. Come on. Yeah. Come on now. You sure? I'm, Your final? No, I'm just asking. I just want to make sure. Who's <laughs> calling? Your whole artist is going to have. <laughs> okay. Because that's when I'll know that the art is speaking because you're not here for the clothes. I need that. Huh. Okay. It's kind of a dig. I'm rolling. Oh, but no, no, no. See, <laughs> understand that. <laughs> For that combination, it would be viewed in this day and time as um, lumberjackish, but that doesn't mean it is not uh, a style that people won't jack. Andre three thousand, you know we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's crazy. I'm thinking you're gonna say Dre the whole time. I'm like, he gonna say Dre? Yeah, that definitely came out of. Left, uh, yeah. No, no, the passion. The passion. Who, the passion of the artist. You threw this nigga off. <laughs> he's, he, he, said Jay Hall, he said Jay Holly for the, for the drip. I love Jay Holly. I, like, I just didn't know he dripped. Um, okay. Hey, yo. So you said 3,000 for the drip. Yeah. Okay. Passion of the artist. The heart of the artist. The heart. Gotta do Michael. Mm. Dust. God, think of me. Dust. Who wanted more than that? Yeah, what is a nigga going yeah, nigga through speaking in a whole to where he has to right say now, that in hey, between? Yeah. And there's understanding in he that. He held on to that thing in the air that holds you and said, what about the elephants? <laughs> what about the sand? You know what I'm saying? That's heart. You care about the things that we can't even go see. Only you've seen them elephants. We ain't got that type of money. He was trying to put us up on Brazil. What man. about grass? He was there. Look, look, he was trying to put us up. I seen his I, statue. I see where you going. It's I in the favela. What about dirt? What about dirt? What about mountain lava? It's burning all the time. <laughs> what about lava? <laughs> what? What about ants? <laughs> What about lion tigers and bears don't have a chance? <laughs> this is why you can't write songs with him, though, because... <laughs> Saying what about lava? He can make anything sound like it's supposed to be cool. Lava. I Michael know can, don't who tell you me were Michael in didn't care about lava. Michael <laughs> cared about lava. But if you look at the hot, lava, it hot, it it's, hot. it's so much of it. Yeah, it's where right. does it go? Does any does it can even help the lava? Times in the ash. Can someone help us with the lava? And then and then it and then it dries and dies. <laughs> help us keep the lava lava. <laughs> keep the lava. And those of you who are making lava lamps, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you extract lava from its place, from its origin, from its home, take it from its hey, parents? Bro, you must be stopped. Yeah, you have to be. Lava belongs with lava, not in your lamps. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. <laughs> oh my god. That is on his teeth. This guy, man. Where are you going? Where are you going? Is this the little bill theme? Oh, no. No, no. Is that about the record? Wrong, you, lo you lost it? I think I lost it. <laughs> He's doing more. Asking him what's I got it. 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 I ain't saying no names. 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 Where you was? Who you was with? Don't say shit. I ain't saying no names. It's a good show. I like this. It's a very important segment. Very okay, important I'm listening. Uh, very important wipe segment. Wipe the rest of those so. CMOS tears. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a there. question to be asked. So this on. segment of the show. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. It's called I Ain't Saying No Names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about your travels in this shit. Mm. Ah, music industry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. The story can be funny or fucked up. Are funny and fucked up. 
could be about your audit when you audit the label shit. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? So hey. <laughs> the only rule to this game no and segment is you just can't say no names. Mm-hmm. Mm. Who you were? Uh, what you did? Who don't say shit. Don't say That's you know? <laughs> I like the references today. Which is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Mm-hmm. But this right here mm-hmm. is Masego. Masego. I ain't saying no names. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Man, what? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, take your time. Get it right. Mm-hmm. Can you just put me in A minor for a second as I think? <laughs> <laughs> you musician niggas, man. <laughs> okay, we could do that. It's a decent story. Max, you know I got mad story. I just got to figure out how to clean this up. No, no, we want the dirty story. Yeah, we, we, want want the dirty. we want the dirty. We want the dirty. We want the dirty. We want the dirty. Max, tell him dirt. Whisper in his ear. Dirt. 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 All right, we'll do. We'll, we'll keep it light for the first one as I think of the second one. All right, boom. It's my first time in L.A. searching for a deal mm-hmm. using my contacts that I have. And then I land a meeting with a uh, really well-known executive and his partner. And they're like, yo, meet us at the top of Soho House. Mm-hmm. You know, can I say names of places? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Niggas be at Soho House, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, see the view, all that. My first time being there. I used to be at the... Um, Rallies. That's where I would do meetings. <laughs> That's where I would do Cookout. meetings. The you rallies. You understand where I'm going? Yeah, Soho from? House is. Yeah, this is yeah. a little different for a guy like me. Yeah, I'm sure they don't have the truffle pizza at rallies. You understand? I, I get it. Uh, I yeah, get it. I, I just traded my so longboard in, so I'm so. It's a different stage. So <clears throat> I show up to this meeting on time, early actually, and um, at first they were asking if I uh, worked there, and I said these are my. These are my famous clothes. No, I don't work here. <laughs> ah! But they said, sir, uh, you know, oh, you're, you're late. When you were downstairs. Yeah, you understand. Yeah, yes. yeah. And I said, no, 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 I, I don't work here. I'm not here to park the cars. I'm here to get a deal. So, boom, uh, after a lot of, um, you know, ego taming, I make my way up to the top of the top of Soho House. Beautiful view. Nice layer of smog and pollution just to coat the clouds of L.A. And a uh, little heroin needle right there in the distance just being shared by a couple love wow and so now i'm here with my manager and um <clears throat> we're just waiting 30 minutes hour hour 30 um i've already consumed the uh, very expensive appetizers i said <clears throat> who's paying for this doesn't matter then two men powerful men walk in i said oh there's the money walking in my deals here let me just move my work clothes them see my chain from Patrick Henry Mall, and so the I middle of the mall. Uh, yes, the the kiosk. I you love that. Understand. I love that. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. gotta fake it till you you understand. No, I still go there. But go ahead, keep going. Yes. <clears throat> well, so uh, I'm trying to like, trying to talk to them like, yo, so I'm a sago and I do this and I play all these instruments, da da da, and I'm just like I'm looking out at the sky like this is my chance. So I'm just telling him who I am and why I am the one he should sign. And then I look down and one of them is sleeping. <sighs> Sleep. Resting. And the other one is just like, yeah, man, you know, it's, he, yeah, he just got back from London. You know how that is. I said, no, I don't know how that is. I, <laughs> I am broke. What is a London? I know, I know what Estelle. London? I know that song. I know Estelle. <laughs> but I'm not her American boy. Well, I'm not her American okay. boy. So he was sleeping and I was just like, well, wake up, Mr. West. And uh, he woke up and he said, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, can we do this over email? And um, I said, yes, we can. And then he left to go to the bathroom and I had to pay for this so on my father's credit card, this meal that we all enjoyed. He ordered the, uh, what is the meal out here? The salmon with the- uh, The meal out here. With the potatoes. Yes, and then those uh, house made chips, I believe. Yeah, they're house made yeah, with the guacamole. Yeah, pretty yeah, good, yeah. the guacamole. Yeah, $50. Quite, uh, quite expensive, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two glasses of wine. I think it was 19 Crimes at the time. Uh, shout out to Snoop. Good partnership. Didn't know. Um, and yeah, yeah, that was a, quite the bill. That took a while to pay off. And then when I would see him in the future, uh, he would just say he's proud of me. And I'd be like, 
guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't saying no names. Yeah. Guacamole. I ain't saying no names. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Appreciate it, man. That was really good. Just had to clean it up. I was like, oh. he need to take you to dinner, man. Oh no, he need to take. He no, 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 no. You got at, at least you gotta, he the brother got to take you to dinner. Just man. one dinner. Just That's one it. dinner, man. It could be at rallies. I'd still show up. And if like anybody ever asks you, can we do this over email? You say no, we cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh, that's tough. We're going to do this now. We ain't going to do it. Mm. That's good. That's a great story, though. That's Appreciate an it. amazing and that's, story. And it's a, and it's, it's a, real. It's Man. It's, mm. it's how this shit goes. This is how it goes. Yep. Let but you guys don't have to be the guacamole guy. You don't have to hey, be the guacamole guy. You don't have to be the guacamole guy. Guacamole Because you guy. might meet with me and I might push the guacamole in your fucking face. Talk to talk. Come on, man. Talk mm-hmm. to talk. Shit. They wake the fuck up, Ryan. Come on, guys. We don't have to be those guys, man. Don't have we to. Don't be those guys. have to be those guys, man. Yep. Mm. You either like it or you don't like it. Tell someone you don't like it. It's it's move okay. On. Let's move and on. move on. Yeah. We don't have to just dis- be disrespectful. Yeah. Like this. Well, brother Masego. Yeah. yeah, that story's great. Thank you. Great Thank story. You. Um, top to bottom. I mean, you you you're still in the beginning stages of writing some really cool shit, man. Writing a really cool story for yourself, yeah, man. And yeah. It's impressive, man. We support you, man. We, we find it suspicious that you haven't been here sooner. But I, that is suspicious. But it's, it's you know, little, it's suspicious. I've watched many an episode. Wait, 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 I'm about to take your head and put <laughs> it on you like this. <laughs> so you got some different product in your head. <laughs> Ain't no product, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so close. You gonna you gonna see a lot of Just this. In, let you gonna, it hey, <laughs> you're gonna see a lot of this in Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. San Paulo right here, baby. This is San Paulo, baby. San Paulo right here, baby. San Paulo, baby. Oh, he speaks Spanish. I know that. He <laughs> saw on the shoulders. It's only right here, baby. Okay, baby. Thank you, brother. Thank I got. I really got to yeah. say that, man, because, you know, um, it's, a, it's a shortage mm. of, of, of truly talented people that are standing on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The compromise is real. Ultimately, people want to make money. They want to live. They want to be in, in the know, in the now. Um, and it's a long road to be talented in today's time. And you are doing it with style and grace, my brother. And you're being very successful at it. So we salute you for that. Thank and you. appreciate yeah. you for that. Thank you both. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the R&B Money Podcast, yeah. the authority on all things R&B. And, and Trap House Jazz. And Trap House Jazz. And this has been the brother himself. Shades on, shades off, don't matter. Do it all. Masejo. 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 Masejo.